Hi hey guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing. Today, I wanna to take a minute to tell you about the best investing advice I ever got. Before I ever invested a single penny, I worked as a river guide out in the Grand Canyon. I made basically enough money to, um, well, live in the barn, have a Harley, you know, scrape by. And when I got the opportunity to learn how to invest, you know, initially I thought I'm not that interested because I'm not really, you know, a person that thinks much about money or thinks much about investing and I don't have any money, so what's the point, right? But I got kind of pulled into it by a guy that mentored me and when I started to understand what it was all about, I pretty much jumped into it and I've done pretty well. Um, I've gotten and given a lot of investing advice over the years. But today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the best advice I ever got. I hope it's as helpful for you as it was for me. So here we go, are you ready? So first, I don't wanna be in a position where I'm looking at the price that somebody's placing on my investment on a daily basis. On a day-to-day -day basis, anybody can throw prices at you and they can be all over the map and they could have nothing to do with the value of what you own. And one way to think about this is to just imagine that you own a farm and your next door neighbor, who's also a farmer, is on the fence all day long, eight hours a day, shouting prices that he's willing to pay for your property. So if you don't have any intention of selling your farm, if your intention is you have this as an investment for the rest of your life, which is essentially what investments are all about, then you would simply not listen to any of these prices. It wouldn't matter at all, except in one case. And that is if he was naming a price so low and he was willing to sell his farm at that price, then you might wanna be interested. But it doesn't matter otherwise. And this is very, very good way to think about stock market prices because stocks are a lot of what we buy. Not the only thing, but it's definitely something we buy. And the disadvantage of the stock market, if you want to think about it like this, is that stock prices can fluctuate up and down every minute, driving people really into some fairly crazy, irrational behavior. So as rule number one investors, these short-term fluctuations are really none of our business. It's not a concern to us just as long as we know we've invested in a really great company, we know it's gonna be more valuable in the future, and we know we paid a big margin of safety discount to the value. So as long as that's the situation, the day-to-day -day prices are meaningless to us. Unless, of course, like I said with the farm, the prices go down so much that we can buy more of that really great investment at a super price. So when we watch these fluctuations as they happen, it can be pretty stressful. People get caught up in the emotion, right? And we all know that emotion and stress leads to irrational and poor investing decisions. So instead of checking on the price of your investments every day, which would be nuts for most things that you would own, be kind of crazy for your house, wouldn't it? Be kind of crazy for a farm, or it may be kind of crazy for that old Mercedes you own that you're gonna be able to sell for more later. Instead of doing that, just think of this, what we call the 10-10 rule. I wanna buy something for 10 minutes I wanna think about it as if I'm gonna own it for the next 10 years. And I wanna think that I just wanna be surprised, buy it, put it on the shelf. It's a great company being managed by great people. Yes, I'm, I'm gonna check up on it as we go along, right? I gotta watch my investments. But basically, the amount of work I'm gonna do staying on top of this thing is, you know, four hours a year or something. So I'm gonna be just sitting there and ready to be surprised in 10 years about how much I made. Whether I made a little, or whether I hit the lottery on this thing. The main thing is if I'm confident that I buy a great company, I buy it with a big margin of safety, there's really no reason to worry about its day-to-day -day fluctuations in price. It can go down a lot and I wouldn't care. Now, the second great piece of advice is that I should live on one income and invest the other one. So if I'm married, I'm with, a, with my significant other, I have effectively two incomes coming in. If I can you know, structure some discipline and live on one income and have the other income available for investing, holy smokes, I am gonna be phenomenally wealthy one day. The other one 
is invested and that becomes one of the best financial decisions you could ever make. Of course, it's not easy to do, right? Living on one income today. Many cases though, families are able to live comfortably off one income and use the second income for what? Uh, they use a second income for experiences, for traveling all over the world, uh, for buying stuff that their neighbors would be envious of, uh, for buying things that you can talk about at cocktail parties. I don't know, stuff that's just basically you look back on in your life, you don't even know why you did it. And that's what a lot of people do with that second income. If it's possible for you to keep the bills paid and just maintain a quality lifestyle, that's all you really need to do, while spending only one income, you know what? You're gonna be able to invest a huge amount of money over the years, and that's gonna set you and your spouse up for a really, really nice retirement. And just think about Warren Buffett. I mean, the guy's still living in the same house he bought in 1960, okay? You don't have to impress your neighbors. And by the way, your neighbors don't care. They're busy trying to impress you. All right, so third, buy businesses. Don't buy stocks. Don't buy real estate. Don't buy farms even though I said that. Buy businesses. Every one of those things is a business. It's not a house you rent, it's a business of renting out space. It's not a stock you bought, it's a business that makes shoes. When you're considering purchasing something, an investment in a company, it's very helpful to think of it as if you're buying the whole thing, right? Just think like, all right, I'm not buying a slice of a thing, I'm buying it all. And after all, because you know, purchasing a piece of stock is a portion of a company. If you wouldn't buy 100% of a company, then what in the world are you doing thinking about buying a tiny percentage of that company? That doesn't make any sense at all. So always think about it the other way around. And that is awesome because if you think about owning the whole company, then you're thinking about the right thing. Is this company worth owning? Does its values match my values? So it would make sense to approach investing as if you're purchasing the entire company outright rather than just buying a little slice of it because it forces you to ask the right questions. When we're buying an investment, we're buying into something, is it worth owning? Is it one that we would be proud to own? If I had billions to spend, is this still a company that I would purchase entirely? So when you take a big picture look at a company, these are questions that can help you make a much better investing decision, particularly around your own values. Fourth, treat all of your investments the same. And this is kind of what I've been driving at all along. They can take different forms. Investments could be everything from real estate to, well, I was gonna say Bitcoin, but eh, I don't know if that's an investment. That's a little bit more like going to Las Vegas, right? So stocks, real estate, farming, um, owning crops, owning commodities, all of these different things can be potential great investments. What makes them great investments is that you treat the structure of that investment the same, whether it's a house you're buying or a share of Boeing. An investment is something that you know is going to make you a positive return in the long run. That is, you know you're not gonna violate rule number one, which is don't lose money. So if you purchase a house, or you invest in a small business running a laundromat, or if you put some money in a stock, you should start approaching those investments with exactly the same strategy that you use across all other investments. Everything is the same. Is it a wonderful business? Do I understand it? Can it protect itself against competition? And finally, am I getting it at a great price? Unfortunately, a lot of people miss this. There are a significant number of people, I would say, who are very successful real estate investors, even if they just own one house that they rent out or one apartment that they rent out, condo, something like that. They're very successful at it. They're very confident in it. They know that in 10 or 20 years, they will have a positive return on that investment. Unfortunately, they don't apply the same criteria to buying a company in the stock market. I've never figured out why. And I think it is because they don't really know why they're so successful at real estate. And if you think about it, the same criteria would apply. What's the moat of the business when you're doing real estate? It's the location of the real estate. You know, you're right on Union Square in New York City, you're gonna probably be okay in 20 years, right? Do you understand the business of renting out that thing? Do you understand what you're gonna make on it? What you're gonna have to spend on it? Sure you do. You're the manager, so you know management is good. And you know when you're getting a good deal, you buy real estate in New York City at a 10 cap, ask anybody who knows anything about real estate, and you are getting a steal. 
So no matter what you're investing in, your approach should remain the same. Is this investment something that's still gonna be around in 10 years, doing better than it's doing today? Will it grow in value over that time because it's continuing to protect itself against competition? And are you paying a price for the investment that is discounted compared to its real value? Now, everything I teach about investing in companies still applies to every investment that you could possibly make. Keyword investment here, not speculation. It applies to every investment you could possibly make. And fifth and finally, the best investment decision that I make is almost always saying no. Opportunities that are really worth capitalizing on, really worth putting your retirement savings into, are much rarer than you might imagine. And that's not to say you can't find them in all markets, you can. It's not even to say that you can't uh, find them on a regular basis, okay, you can. But finding a company that's actually worth investing in takes time, takes research, takes understanding the thing, and it takes patience. Once in a while, once in a while, we have an opportunity to load up the truck on a lot of stuff. Now with this in mind, the best investment decision is usually gonna be no, because if you're gonna be a successful investor, you gotta get comfortable with the idea of turning down a lot of opportunities other people might think are okay things that you're thinking, maybe I'm taking a little chance on this, or maybe I'll give this a shot. So here's why I think that you really should be saying no a lot. You wanna be in a position when an opportunity comes along that you're going to flat load up the truck. You're not gonna put in a little bit. Warren Buffett says, when it starts raining gold, you don't wanna go out there with a thimble, you wanna go out there with a wash tub. And in order to do that, you have to know it's really good. So don't feel as if you have to invest all the cash you have available right away. It's totally wrong. There's certainly nothing wrong with sitting on cash for a while until you find a great company and you know the price is right. I mean, think about it. Anything else you do with your cash is just speculation and you hope it works out. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think the best investing advice is that you ever got? And was it from me? Yeah, let me know. So leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching you guys, now go play. If you enjoyed this video, you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about great investing advice, hit the like button and please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel, we got a lot of great stuff here. And don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. And thanks again for watching.